ex-assassin Arthur is living a peaceful life in Rio de Janeiro under a false identity after faking his death during a recent adventure. One afternoon, while having a good time at a nice restaurant, Arthur is approached by Renee, who has proof of who she is. She plays a power person who plans to hire Arthur to kill three enemies and make it look like an accident. If he refuses the offer, his boss will let the criminals know that Arthur is alive. Arthur pretends to be on the phone and pulls out his cell phone, but he was actually using it to take pictures of Renee. She quickly draws her gun and Arthur rejects the offer by pressing a table against her. All of Renee's henchmen attack Arthur, and he fights them off using self-defense and any item he can find in the restaurant, including the grill itself. Arthur escapes by jumping on the roof of a passing tram, but Renee and her men board the same tram and attempt to shoot Arthur from the inside. Renee also tries to approach him, so Arthur decides to jump on the back of the hang glider and escape safely. In the evening, when Arthur returns to the boat where he lives, he finds suspicious men examining it. Using a remote control, he activates an emergency bomb he has set up, detonating the boat and killing them. He then goes to an old container where he hid all his tools, burns his old passport and replaces it with a new identification. After some time, Arthur moves to Thailand, where his old friend May gives him back his old hut. Arthur has hidden more weapons and tools under the floor of the hut, so he immediately begins investigating Renee. He finds out she works for Crane, a dangerous criminal with whom he has a close relationship. The next day, a woman named Gina comes to May and asks for first aid supplies. She discovers that she has bruises on herself, but Gina refuses further help. As night falls, May hears her screams from one of the boats and she realizes Gina is being beaten by a man named Frank. She asks Arthur for her help and Arthur doesn't want to leave, but she knows she owes May her. Arriving on the boat, Arthur tries to politely ask about Gina, but Frank attacks him. Arthur immediately fights back, and Frank accidentally hits his head in a fall and dies. When Gina sees her body, she faints, and May approaches the boat and takes her to shore. Meanwhile, Arthur looks around and discovers a gun, Gina's passport, and a cell phone with his picture on it. Arthur then sets the boat on fire. Back at the hut, Arthur wakes Gina up and asks her if she works for Crane at gunpoint. Gina tries to disarm him, but Arthur easily overpowers her and persuades her. Crane sent in Gina, but she didn't actually work for him, and Crane blackmailed her into working. She was supposed to play an innocent victim to get Arthur's attention, but Frank was a little too involved in the role. The plan was to approach Arthur and then call Crane, but Arthur forbids it, he'll decide when they're coming. The next day, Arthur learns that Gina was once a member of a humanitarian organization that helped Cambodia. Arthur asks Gina what Crane has, and Gina explains that she ran an asylum for victims of human trafficking. A staff member went missing a few weeks ago and her body was found on the doorstep two days later. Crane has sent minions to kill Gina's children if she doesn't take up the task. Later, Arthur noticed a boat nearby with men looking out to the shore. Since they were probably sent by Crane, Arthur walks around hand in hand with Gina, giving the impression that their mission is going well. May realizes this and throws a party according to an old Thai tradition, and Arthur and Gina end up having a good time together. In the evening, Gina apologizes to Arthur for getting him into this mess. She explains that she knows Arthur's because he was an orphan himself. He was sold to a gang that trained child soldiers, including Crane. Arthur escaped but Crane was unable to and Arthur believed they blamed Crane and now wants revenge. Gina and Arthur kiss and spend the night together. Afterwards, Arthur promises Gina that he did everything he could to get her children out of danger. He doesn't do the murders Crane asks him to do, he just kills Crane himself. Arthur also gifts Gina his father's watch, the only memory he has of him. The next morning, a group of police officers arrive at the beach, and Gina recognizes one of them as Crane's man. Arthur begins to fight them off, but while he is busy, the men kidnap Gina, forcing Arthur to meet with Crane. Some time later, Crane tells Arthur that if he wants her Gina back, he must kill three people for himself and make her look like her accident. The first is Krill, Africa's most famous arms dealer, currently in prison in Malaysia. Crane also gives him a pill to swallow so he can find him after the murder. While Arthur is at work, Gina is hidden in one of the many boats owned by Crane. Arthur travels to Malaysia and begins exploring the prison. The prison is perched on a cliff and surrounded by shark-infested waters, making it impossible to sneak inside. With a plan in mind, Arthur buys a powerful explosive, disguises it as a bite-type buzz shark repellent, places it in a jar of skin cream, and hides a capsule inside a cigarette. Eventually, he creates fake IDs and disguises himself as a notorious wanted criminal. Arthur is quickly spotted walking the streets of Malaysia and he is arrested. In prison, the receptionists saw nothing out of the ordinary with his belongings and allow them to be kept. During the first few days, Arthur calmly talks to other prisoners to learn more about his goals. Krill is constantly being chased by his men because many are trying to kill him. Even though he's trapped, Krill runs all his business from here and is the real boss of this place. Arthur witnesses the exchange of knives between the two prisoners, and sneaks into them at lunchtime to steal the knife. Later, 
One of Krill's former men tries to kill Krill in revenge, but Arthur intervenes and kills Krill with a knife. Krill is so impressed that he invites Arthur to dinner. Arthur will only accept this if Krill is willing to let her men out. Surprisingly, Krill accepts his terms and that night Arthur is taken out of his cell and meets Krill in his private cabin. Krill tries to offer Arthur a job, but when he turns around, Arthur lunges at him and squeezes his neck, killing him. The snake venom that the Krill uses in rituals is then mixed with the actual drink to make it appear as if the Krill did something for itself. The guards outside are suspicious, but Arthur has placed the corpse in a prayer position, so they assume the silence is religious. Arthur then punches a hole in the prison wall with explosive gum. He then swallowed a pill, covered himself with shark repellent, and jumped into the water before being caught by police. Crane's men are waiting on a fishing boat, and Arthur escapes safely. Crane makes a video call to prove Gina's safety and names Arthur a second target, Australian trafficker Adrian Cook. A few days later, Arthur examines the target. He learns that Cook's penthouse suite is inaccessible, but also has a cantilevered pool that juts out onto the street. Arthur hires a helicopter to survey the building from afar and pretends to be interested in one of the apartments near Cook's house. While her agent shows him around, Arthur calls her to distract her, takes a picture of the keys to her apartment, and makes a duplicate. Ultimately, he used dangerous chemicals to create a small but effective explosive that shattered glass, making it appear as if it had burst under pressure. A few days later, Arthur disguised himself as a technician and entered the building unnoticed, using a duplicate key to enter the apartment. Using advanced equipment, Arthur exits the building through a window and climbs up the building until he reaches the pool, where he digs a small hole to insert a special explosive charge. Cook is swimming and sees Arthur, but the glass begins to break before he can call the guards. Arthur jumps and slides down the building back to his apartment, but the pool collapses and Cook falls to his death. Crane learns of Cook's death on the news and orders his men to prepare for the next video call. Gina notices that she happens to be seated near a window with the ship's hull number on it, and moves the camera so the window fits in the frame. As the call begins, Gina raises her hand to show Arthur her watch to see the numbers. The henchmen hang up as soon as they find out, but Arthur manages to get the number and uses it to find out the boat's location. Arthur then has a helicopter follow Crane's boat, jumping into the water with a bag packed with special equipment. After hiding the bag under the boat, Arthur sneaks aboard and begins killing every man he meets. Unfortunately, he is spotted, Arthur gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat with a group of thugs, and Gina is escorted out of the room. She tries to defend herself, but lacks basic skills and is put on a helicopter. Arthur jumps on top of one of the guards and grabs the grenade while using the guard as a shield to defeat the chasing villains. Unfortunately more men come and harass him in an attempt to catch him. Shortly after, Gina and Arthur are taken to another boat, where Crane confesses that he hadn't committed the third murder yet, although he knew Arthur was desperate to do it. After Crane leaves, Arthur punches the guard instead of letting him take him in properly. He then dives into the water to obtain equipment such as oxygen tanks and a small motor that allows him to escape safely. A few days later, Arthur stays in Bulgaria, where he learns the details of the latest murder, American arms dealer Max Adams. Arthur begins an investigation and discovers that Adams has a maximum security fort holding an intercontinental ballistic missile submarine. He is also made to realize that these killings are Crane's attempts to eliminate all of his arms dealing competitors, which makes him think. Moments later, Arthur shoots one of Adams' guards from afar, sneaks onto the hospital roof, and hides inside a rescue helicopter. The pilot flies to Adam's fortress to check on the fallen soldiers, and while everyone is distracted, Arthur is allowed into the building. He installs a jamming device inside to destroy the surveillance cameras and begins eliminating any guards he sees. Soon the building is put on alert and the minions take Adams to the panic room. Arthur stops them by malfunctioning the elevator. When Adams got to his room, Arthur was already waiting for him. However, Arthur does not shoot and instead offers to work with Adams to defeat Crane. Arthur's plan begins with Adams faking his own death. Moments later, as Adams inspected the submarine and stepped onto the bridge, the bomb exploded. Underwater ready, Arthur shares an oxygen tank with Adams to take them to the beach. Crane witnessed the explosion on television, and the news reported that Adams was buried under a pile of underwater debris. Arthur then calls to inform him of his third murder, but Crane refuses to believe it until he sees the body. Arthur promises to find a body in the water. After hanging up, Crane dispatches his men to find Adams' body and kill Arthur. Meanwhile, Arthur returns to the submarine dock and prepares a series of traps in advance. When Crane's minions arrive, one by one they fall into a trap and die, those who don't fall are killed by the shadowy Arthur. Crane next realizes that Arthur is after him, so he lets Gina out as a decoy. Arthur navigates through the water to reach the boat and begins killing the guards as soon as he finds them. Crane sees Arthur on a surveillance camera and orders his men to bring Gina back inside just before Arthur destroys the camera. Gina tries to fight off the guard who grabbed her, but she ends up injuring her abdomen in the process. Her guard then pushes her into the hot tub and grabs Crane next to her. As Arthur continues to fight the guards, 
Crane takes Gina inside and activates a hidden explosive on her boat. He then begins his getaway in a lifeboat. A mere second later, Arthur finds Gina and learns of her bomb, and Arthur drives Gina back in her emergency release pod. Arthur then goes after Crane and kills the last guard before the melee begins. Crane puts his hand on the anchor chain and grabs Arthur's leg, but Arthur uses its length to tie him to the boat. Crane laughs that Arthur takes too long and he dies too, but Arthur doesn't seem too worried and he rushes in just before the bomb explodes. Gina watches the boat shatter and go up in flames, and weeps over Arthur's death. At least the explosion found her whereabouts and she was rescued by the Coast Guard. Mr. Adams was also watching from the coast, and thought that there was something wrong with the parts of the boat being taken out of the sea, and also noticed a nearby surveillance camera. A few weeks later, Gina returned to Cambodia with her children and she emailed May thanking her for donating her water filter. One afternoon, while she was busy teaching her, she was shocked to learn that Arthur was alive and had come to visit her. Meanwhile, Adams investigates Crane's boat and learns that this model is equipped with something called a diving bell. Air is trapped in this model to allow divers to breathe underwater. With the hypothesis in mind, Adams examines CCTV footage and confirms that Arthur escaped by hiding inside a diving bell. Impressed by the plan, Adams deletes the footage to protect Arthur's future. End. Conclusion, after successfully eliminating Crane and saving Gina, Arthur continues to live under his false identity in Rio de Janeiro. He maintains a peaceful life, but his past as an ex-assassin continues to haunt him. However, he has gained a new purpose in life, helping others and seeking justice. His encounter with Gina has brought them together, and they find solace and support in each other's company. Arthur's skill and intelligence are still utilized as he teams up with Max Adams to take down Crane and other dangerous criminals. Despite the challenges they face, Arthur and Gina's bond grows stronger, and they find a semblance of happiness together in their new life.